crap. Oh, my cat threw up again. Side Hustle Show 100, behind the scenes at Side Hustle Nation. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, where aspiring part-time entrepreneurs learn how to turn their side hustle dreams into reality. Because your 9 to 5 may make you a living, but your 5 to 9 makes you alive. And now, your host, Nick Loper. What's happening? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, the Century Mark, the 100th episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode 100, triple digits, baby. Uh, A little bit of a different show for you today. Alex Barker is here to actually flip the mic on me and ask uh, some questions of his, plus some listener questions that came in, and I'm going to do my best to make coherent responses. Um... I, I realize I've told my story kind of in bits and pieces on the podcast in passing or, um, or, or on the blog, but I don't know if I've ever broken it down on, um, on the show like this before. So I, I will warn you, it's a little bit fluffy. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit soft, you know, relative to the normal, uh, hard hitting tactical nuts and bolts kind of material, uh, they were used to on the show. And, and for that reason, I was actually kind of hesitant to to run with it, but I did want to do something different for episode 100, even though it's you know just kind of a uh, an arbitrary number out there. Um, and, and Alex reminded me uh, of an episode of the Inspiring Innovation podcast that my my friend Ron Bereket runs, and, who did the exact same thing, and and it was actually one of my favorite episodes of of his show. And actually, Alex hosted that one as well. So I'm trying to trying to uh, replicate the the magic uh, of that one. So hopefully you like it. If not, uh, I promise to be back with your regularly scheduled side hustle goodness next week. And uh, and hopefully you can bear with me until then. Uh, but now is as good a time as any to say thank you to a flood of new iTunes reviewers. Uh, all five star reviews coming in uh, the last couple months from Shot X Wolf, Nicole Keating, Harry the Rideshare Guy, Mike Rasika, Sean. Marshall, Ashley, Alcon, Things I Loathe. Uh, thankfully, they don't loathe the uh, the podcast. Cinnabon, Blake Johnson, Ed Stanfield, Kudu Jerky, and Feng 1235 Thank you guys so, so much for these reviews. Uh, I mentioned on, an, on another show, like, I am so grateful for, like, the, the podcast award nomination and everything like that. It it, it would never would have happened without without your support and without the amazing guests that come on to to share their story. So thank you guys so much for that. If you'd like to leave a review of your own, it's sidehustlenation.com slash iTunes. It'll get you uh, get you over there. In the meantime, let's get this self indulgent show on the road. So you want me to say welcome? Like, hey, welcome. Yeah, welcome welcome, welcome to, to the side hustle show. <laughs> wow, wow. Hey guys, welcome to the side hustle show. This is your co-host. Is that an appropriate thing to say? Alex Barker. I am an online entrepreneur, full-time pharmacist, father, husband, all that stuff. And I'm so pumped, so excited because I get to interview someone who's been my mentor, my kind of my virtual, uh, one of my virtual board of directors, Nick Loper, for the 100th episode. Nick, are you ready? I'm I'm a little nervous about this to be honest, but uh, I think it'll be fun. You guys may remember Alex from episode 40 way back in the day. We were talking about uh, the power of masterminds, and that was, uh, and that conversation actually turned into um, a nice little side hustle for me. Started in the inner circle um, side hustle mastermind. So, the Alex, publicly, time to thank you for that, <laughs> and uh, let's uh, let's get into it. I don't know I don't know what's in store for this. Well, you know, Nick, I, when I think about the side hustle show. Um, I've been listening since probably like episode 20 and it's been a huge journey for me. And I mean, that's, it's almost been what, two years, right? Since you really launched the show. And I think what would be a great place to start is to give people kind of an overview of your story, where you come from, because not everyone has listened probably from the first episode, but, you know, tell us about Nick Loper, who he is, where he came from, and how he got to start the Side Hustle show. I really feel for the people who who started at episode one, because some of those early ones I think are are pretty rough. (laughs) But it's like, (laughs) it's like, um, you know, the Reed Hoffman quote from from LinkedIn, right? Like, if you're not embarrassed by your first by your first product, you you ship too late. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, I I mean, I grew up in Seattle. I'm 
I've kind of spent some time on the on the East Coast for work before circling back to California. Been in California ever since. Um, you know, married my high school sweetheart, and Aww. and here we are. So, I I worked corporate after college. Actually, we can back it up because I, you know, I was the kid who was like selling baseball cards at the end of the driveway. I was the kid, <laughs> like, um, you know, selling candy at summer camp. Like, always had this this drive to to hustle, to make money, to, you know, be entrepreneurial. But where that really took off, or where that really took hold, was in college. I took this internship. I know we've talked about house painting on the show before, but it was like. They uh, assign you a zip code essentially and say it's your job to go paint as many houses as you can in this zip code over the course of uh, over the course of the summer. And of course, you have um, very limited painting experience. I mean, I like painted at my parents' house and and that was it. But like to go out and convince people to trust you with their biggest asset and and you did not screw it up. And everything that can go wrong did go wrong. And it was very, it was very stressful. It was a ton of work. It was also some of the most challenging, some of the most rewarding work that I've ever done. And I, I talk about the this time of like, you, this is like pre-GPS, right? So I'm like driving around. I have, the, <laughs> I have like the paper Thomas Guide map of my territory. And I like pull into this subdivision, I think looks like a good a place as any to start. And I remember sitting in my truck on like this cold, rainy March evening in, in Seattle or outside of Seattle and, and like trying to, trying to psych myself out. Like this is, you know, as awkward as, as, you know, going out and knocking on doors is now, I feel like it was probably less awkward, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, <laughs> but like, it's, it's even scarier the thought of it now, but like for my introverted self, you know, come trying to like go over my pitch and, and psych myself up for this because there's no marketing budget. Like you have to go like literally find your customers door to door. And, you know, to build up that nerve, like you come to the realization, like, look, nothing is ever going to happen until you go out and knock on that first door. And so, you know, you, you, you get out of the car and nobody, and thankfully I don't think anybody was home at that first house. It's like, okay, that wasn't so bad. And then you go on to the next one and the next one and you get some door slammed in your face or whatever. But you realize like it's not, it's not life threatening and each no, you know, gets you closer to that yes. And so that was, um, I don't know, that was the start. And at the end of the summer, you know, if, if you, if you make it through, they kind of publish a little thing on the company internet that says, you know, if you made it this far, essentially we've ruined your life. And they went on to explain <laughs> what that meant. They're like, look, you've had the taste of working for profits, not wages. You've had the taste of being your own boss. You've had the taste of like closing these deals and, and, and you're not going to be able to work for anybody else. And you, you kind of brush it off at the time, but they were like absolutely right about that. It was a very empowering kind of thing to be like, look, I'm, I built this. We, we painted 30 houses or you, we, we built a, a $70,000 business over the course of the summer. And you know, it was pretty cool. So this was in high school, right? This was in college, first couple of years of college. Oh, okay, college, sorry. And then you graduated from college. What was your degree? Um, I studied marketing and IS, information systems. Okay. And then you went into corporate. So if you don't mind sharing, where'd you work? I worked for Ford Motor Company. Ooh. The Blue Oval. And you liked it, you hated it. It was, it was meh. It was, it was okay. I didn't hate it, but I also never saw myself as like, you know, being the, being the person to climb the corporate ladder, if that makes okay. sense. So what was the transition then between working for Ford to Side Hustle Nation? Tell us about that period. So they, so there, there's a, there's an intermediary business that, that comes before that. And it's uh, called shoesniper.com, which actually <laughs> ran for 10 years. So I started this business um, on a very, very small scale, like my last year of college, kind of doing affiliate marketing from the basement of our college house with a budget of a dollar a day on on Google to say, like, you know, if you're searching for this very specific model of shoes, I know exactly where you can find it. I'm going to put that direct link into into Google, a little text ad. Somebody's going to buy it through that link and I'm going to get a credit for it. And then 
after graduation moved to the moved to the East Coast. So it didn't have, you know, any built in network outside of, you know, outside of the office, really. And so I was like, well, what can I do to kind of scale this up? What can I do to grow this? This was very time consuming. Every ad you had to make, you know, individually and you had to, you know, price check everything and things would go out of stock or, you know, the prices would change. And so I figured the only way to kind of scale this up would be to like build an actual website. And of course, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing, but put this job up for bid on guru.com. This is like a, like a precursor to Elance. I don't know if Elance maybe existed <laughs> at the time, but guru.com is, is that still I, around. It, it is. It is. Okay. And I've, I've got a few bids back and one of the guys actually happened to be just like a half hour away from me in Virginia. And I was like, okay, perfect. You know, so we, I was actually able to go meet in person with this developer in Virginia and you know, I think once he found out that it was it was just me with like this random idea, he kind of cut me a little bit of a deal. Um, but it was still it was still a ten thousand dollar investment to, <laughs> to get started. So that was a big that was a big bet at the time. It was a pretty scary it was a pretty scary thing to do. Were you married at the time? No, no, no. And and I don't okay. I don't know if I told my wife to be that I don't, I don't know if I told her how much it, it cost um, until until later. Does she listen to the show? Uh, she's listened to a few episodes. I don't know. Okay. If but, so she knows about your ten thousand dollar bet, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. okay, okay, absolutely. I mean, and so we, this is no shocker. <laughs> no, no, that's not. We we've, we've definitely covered that since then, and and gone on. You know, that's that's one of the myths of you know web development or or software development or anything like that. Is like my my website is going to be done. Like I'll hear I'll meet people at conferences and they'll say, my my website's almost done, and it's kind of a laughable thing because it's never really it's never really done. Like there's always going to be updates, and so probably you had to invest another six figures into it over the years for upgrades and bug fixes and all this other nonsense. But that was the that was the bet I made, and it, it's a um, it's a Jim Collins thing. It's a you know firing bullets than cannonballs. Like if I hadn't had the the proof that this concept could work from those little dollar a day text ads, you know, never would have had the confidence to, to place that bet. So you make shoe sniper and it's super successful as we all know. And what was the transition to side hustles? So the, the, the very first day of my, of my self-employment, so I, you know, I've been building this thing. So it was three years, nights and weekends, building up the the traffic, the advertising, the database, the you know outsourced help, and everything that went into the the shoe business. Finally, get off the nerve to quit my job. Like you know, never had any issues. I'm envisioning like the the four hour work week, margaritas on the beach <laughs> lifestyle, because hey, you know nothing bad has ever happened in this in this business yet. Like this is you know very very naively looking at it. And on day one of self-employment, the server crashes. Oh. It, maybe that's like a bad omen. That's like a bad, uh, a bad uh, you know black flag or black cloud over my over my first day. But like, okay, that's that's fine. That's temporary. I'll go to the gym. You know, the tech guys they'll fix it. Um, but of all days, Google decided that was the day they were going to crawl the site for like their quality guidelines. And they said, first they said, hey, this is a crappy site. It doesn't even load. You know, there's no way we can have this on our network. And so I come back and say, hey, look, the site, the site loads now. It's fine. But it had kind of raised their, you know, it suddenly had gotten on their radar. And so they looked at it and they said, hey, this is just a crappy uh, affiliate site. Or, you know, the, the sole purpose of you existing is to send traffic to, to other stores, which was true. Like I, I wanted to get paid from Zappos, from Amazon, like from, from these retailers. And I was like, you guys, it's kind of, this is hypocritical, right? Like that's the sole purpose of Google to existing. You search for something in Google, Google directs you to another website, right? They didn't, they didn't really like that. And <laughs> on the other hand, they didn't really tell you what they were looking for, like to get back into their good graces. And so I had, you know, just, just quit my job, just turning the keys to my company car. And all of a sudden, 80% of my traffic and revenue is, is gone, like overnight. And like, like we're not on video. Prior to that time, I had hair. Like it was it was it was a very very stressful summer to try and figure out, you know, what am, what am I going to do? 
And you, I, I kind of think about it, like, had I waited, you know, even just one more day to quit, like I might never have, I might never have done it because it's just like, you know, now, you know, the, all the scary things that are out there, all the scary things that could, uh, that could destroy this business. So it was very fragile in that standpoint in relying on that one. And that's something that we talk about, you know, a lot on, on the side hustle show, right? Like if you're relying on, you know, you, your job, like this one source of income, that's an inherently risky position. Mm-hmm. But I was in, I was in the exact same position, even as an entrepreneur, you know, relying on just one source of, uh, one source of traffic. So that kind of was an indicator to me that, you know, diversification was going to be a, a core tenant. <laughs> I'm not going to, not going to allow any one of these things to, to really shut me down and, and coming down the line that turned into, you know, all of the fun experiments that we get to do at, at side hustle nation. It was a few years before that, you know, ever turned into a reality, but, um, I'm happy to, uh, happy, happy to have gone down that path now. What was the like inspiration for side hustle show where you just kind of like, well, maybe I'll just talk about what I'm doing and maybe see what happens from it. Or did you just want like a home base? Cause you know, I, I know that you wouldn't talk about your business on shoe sniper in, in the same way you do now. Right. Right. Well, it kind of stems back like a few years, even before that, people were telling, like, I would go to like uh, affiliate summit, like the big conference in the affiliate space. And people would be like, you, YouTube is, is the future. You got to do video. And I was like, Dude, I really don't want to do video. Like I don't want <laughs> my, you know, my face on the camera and like all the technical stuff. I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. And, 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 and miss the boat on YouTube. Like, I mean, I, you know, finally have gotten around to doing some videos now, but in, in those early days, I think there was a, you know, a great opportunity there that I kind of missed. And so when people were saying, you know, 2013 or whatever it was when we launched, 2013 is the year of the podcast. Podcasting is the future. You got to do a podcast. I was like, I'm not missing the boat again. I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't have to have my face on camera. I can do, I can do, an, I can do a podcast. And, and that's kind of how it, how it started. And it was inspiration from, from smart passive income, inspiration from the, the lifestyle business podcast, which is now a tropical MBA. Mm-hmm. Um, so those guys really, those guys in my earbuds kind of vicariously helped, uh, helped launch the side hustle show. Nice. And here you are a hundred episodes later and you've done a lot of things you've had. I mean, how many side hustles do you think you have, Nick? I, I I did an episode a while ago on like, you know, the eight income streams that I'm chasing right now and, and probably a similar net. Maybe that's grown a little bit since then, maybe eight or 10 now. But the challenge is it's a little bit like, um, like a game of whack-a-mole, right? Like if you really focus your energy on one area, uh, another area is going to decline or another area. Mm-hmm. It was kind of hard to keep all of those going at the same time. Um, and you know, I'm trying to get better about kind of systemizing them, some things and, and delegating some things, but there's, there's some challenges over there. You know, some people call it shiny object syndrome and I, yeah. I'm kind of sick of all of the syndromes that are going around these days. Like these, like, just quit making excuses, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, they, but there are, there's a lot of fun things that I'd love to, that I'd love to try and tackle, but there's just a limited amount of time to, to get it done. Uh, some people ask some questions and maybe we'll answer those in a bit, but I kind of want to ask one that's a little bit similar about, you know, major wins and, and, and failures since you started the side hustle show, what, what has been like some of the greatest successes that you think you've had? Oh my gosh. The show, the show is like absolutely the highlight of, of my week. Like, you know, being able to connect with these awesome people, you know, week in and week out, like there, there's like how, if you have a podcast and no one listens to, I guess eventually that's going to make it hard to get guests, but like you could start a show just for that excuse only. And it would, and it would be totally worth it. Like, even if no one was tuning in, like it's, it's so, so cool to be able to kind of expand your, expand your friend base, expand your network in that way. And just like watching the, you know, watching the, the audience, watching the numbers grow, getting tweets and emails and comments from, from listeners. Because here's the thing, like from, from my standpoint, it takes the exact same amount of effort to produce a show 
this year as it did last year, right? But there is, you know, five or eight or 10 times more people listening, right? So it's something that scales really, really nicely. But one thing that you have done with this show that, uh, I mean, I've appreciated is that you, you don't bring on people that are always looking to sell something. Yeah. And uh, I mean, kudos to you, Nick. I, I actually really appreciate that, that you, you get guests who are in the trenches, who don't always have all the answers, but yet are willing to share their story and, and what they've learned. And that's been so inspirational to me. And, and this is nothing, my, this statement is nothing against um, what other shows are and what other people have done. I mean, I've been inspired by great people. I know you have too, Nick. You, you mentioned the guys at Tropical NBA and Pat Flynn, and they're awesome. Um, but it is refreshing in, in a really great way to listen to people who are on the daily grind, who have nine to five jobs, and who are hustling because that, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. One question that. Thank you for that. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I've had to. I've had to like turn down interviews from, you know, quote unquote, like, you know, celebrity guests because, because of that same, same feedback. Like, you know, we don't want to hear the person who's been on every, uh, on every show. And, and when those people do come on, it's like trying, it's a challenge to try and find a, a different angle. Like we had John Corcoran on recently, right. Who's been on every podcast, but like, instead of talking about his networking tips, let's talk about like, Oh, how did he build this course? So something, I don't know, trying to find a different angle and I don't know. I appreciate it. I mean, I don't mind being sold to, especially if I really like the idea. It's just, it's so nice to have a show where the stars aren't being elevated, right? Okay. I like it. <laughs> I, I, You know, one and one thing I mentioned earlier, because uh, I, I, I do work full time and I'm, I'm doing this side hustle business. Uh, a question that we had come in from Mark, who I think is a part of the Side Hustle Nation Facebook group, said, what's the hustle that you would recommend with limited time that brings in income the fastest? Amazon Kindle Publishing. <laughs> is that is that what he said? No, that's me telling a joke. Oh, OK. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely don't definitely don't write a book. Um. Uh, what I would do is find somebody you can help find, find a business preferably that you can help solve a problem for. So if, if that is, you know, freelancing, if that is, you know, providing some sort of, you know, marketing service, some sort of, um, like, like we heard from Dane Shuda just, just a few weeks ago, right? He's like, I started out doing blogging for companies who wanted a blog, but didn't have anybody in house to do it. 50 bucks a week, you know, 200 bucks a month. All of a sudden, if I get 10 clients, you know, and I'm off to the races. Um, something like that would, would probably be the way I would start. Any particular industry that you would target? Uh, I think it depends on what you, on what you know. So, you know, for me now I could do something, you know, uh, for, for podcasters, for authors, for, um, I don't know, bloggers, but bloggers don't have any money. <laughs> um, but you know, co you know, companies who want to get into content marketing or something like that. Right. But you made an important point. You, when you want to start, uh, you want to target people who have money because it's useless to make a business for people who don't have money. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You want to solve a problem for people who have money. Yeah. Uh, let's go into another question. This comes from David Chesson. I believe I said that right, of kindlepreneur.com, who is awesome, by the way. I love Dave. He's so generous and really brilliant guy. He asked, if you had to go back and start the Side Hustle Nation all over again, what would you do differently? I'd probably focus more on outreach, more on guest posting. So I did a few guest posts at the beginning, but not a lot. And so the traffic was kind of slow to slow to grow and like you know you you want to put your best stuff up on your own site like that's only natural but the problem is n there's nobody here to read it and so it makes more <laughs> sense to and like it's totally an ego trip like i know i'm gonna 
you know, put this stuff out, but it's like, you, you can find uh, a little bit of a bigger platform to, to put that stuff out. I know it's, you know, you, you, you read like, um, Oh, Matt cut said guest blogging is dead. Like, don't that, you know, don't do it for the sake of SEO, do it to, to reach, you know, your target readers and, and a percentage of those people will, will appreciate you and come and find you. Another question from Pierce. It was, it was kind of a similar question uh, to Mark's. He said, if you had to start over from scratch, no connections, no money, no assets, what would be your first side hustle? And, oh, his website is geared4growth.co. Okay. Starting over, no no assets, no nothing. I mean, you still have, you know, whatever, you know, the, the skills and, and knowledge that you have and the experience that you have. And there, there are people out there willing to, willing to pay for that. It's just a matter of trying to find them. And so if you have, I mean, if you have no connections, that's probably the first step to try and figure out how you can reach those people, whether that's, you know, through social media, through Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, Twitter, um, or just, you know, one of the most impressive things that I've found is just like Googling like personal finance blog or, you know, dog training blog. And all of a sudden I've got like pages and pages of, of results of like, and, and sometimes somebody will all have already done the work for you. Here are the top 49, uh, personal finance blogs you need to follow. And if I'm looking for, you know, to outreach to those people and to those readers, like all of a sudden now I've got a list of 49 people to target. Let's go to, let's go to another, uh, listener question. This is from Michael Rasika. I'm sorry, Michael, if I'm mispronouncing your name. Rasika, maybe? <laughs> Rasika, yeah, I don't know. He's Mike is a buddy of both of uh, ours, and his website is youngarchitect.com. He asked, I want to hear all about Nick Loper's failures. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We, we could do a whole episode on Nick's failures. <laughs> uh, big and small. Yeah, so I can learn from them. Mike, you're an awesome guy, and that's totally up his alley to ask that question. So... Let let's just uh, go with one big failure. Well, and and then we can maybe do a small one. But <laughs> what's one big failure of Nick Loper? One of the biggest. Well, okay. So there's two. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yeah, guys, we, we we could talk for days on this. But a couple a couple ones come to mind. One of the most expensive ones was. Um, making bad hiring decisions for, for web development help. So when it came time to do a redesign for the shoe site, like I was, I was pissed off with my, you know, for, you know, my current, um, technical team cause they were like super slow to respond. And there was all these like bugs on the site and it was like loading really slow. And so I was like, Hey, I had beginner's luck the first time in hindsight, I found a team that could, that could build this thing and I, I can do it again. And so I put the job out for bid, found, actually found a company in, in the U S that was, you know, bidding this similar price to the companies in India. So it's like, this is fantastic. No communication barrier. This guy speaks my language. He's already talking about, you know, the, the bottom line, he's already talking about like, Oh, we're going to generate more revenue for you. Like perfect, totally sold on it. And a couple critical mistakes here. Um, the first is he, he says, Hey, I can save you some money if you uh, if you hire me offside of outside of Elance. You know, they they take a whatever percent fee. Um, you know, I can meet you in the middle if we if we go off platform. I'm like, sure, I'll I'll save a couple bucks. That sounds great because I trusted the guy. Like we talked on the phone. Like I was I was smitten with him. And then, <laughs> you know, a couple months later, like he's just he's a wall. Like he's just not responding to things. Like bitten off way more than he can chew. Can't figure out how to get this thing done technically. And it's, you know, it's just all that waste of time, all that waste of dollars is completely just back to the drawing board. And because it was off Elance, there's, there was no recourse. Like I couldn't go to their escrow. I couldn't go to their, you know, dispute resolution. I couldn't do anything. And it was just whatever, if, if they charge a 10% fee, it's absolutely worth it for that. <laughs> they like, so if somebody tries to take you off platform, don't, don't, don't do it. Um, Another big, I guess a couple other failures just on like smaller sites. Like I tried to build like a wine related site. I tried to build a couple sites on topics I just didn't care about. Like I had no interest in and, 
you know, so I had a really, really hard time creating content for that. So it was just kind of regurgitated stuff that was available on other people's sites. There was no unique, there was no unique reason for anyone to visit here. Mm. And, and so of course it kind of flopped and didn't have the interest in, in keeping, keeping it going. So would, are you, uh, in, in the camp of you need to follow your passion or you need to follow what you're passionate with? I, I don't like the word, <laughs> but <laughs> do, do something that you care about. Do something that you're at least interested in Yeah. because otherwise you're, you're going to get burned out because it, it can be a long road, you know? Yeah, I would totally agree. Um, I mean, I, I tell my clients, if you follow what you're passionate about, that passion can die out, right? I mean, we've all had uh, teenage flings, right, when we were younger and we were super passionate back then, but maybe i'm not like nick loper though <laughs> but still for going me, strong we're we're uh, 16 16 years together next month kudos uh <laughs> kudos but i couldn't i couldn't own up to that i had a teenage fling i was super passionate about her and sure enough with time that passion just died uh oh, do do so. something that you like <laughs> you know follow follow something that you've been doing for like 10 years and then do that you had some questions, didn't you, Nick? Um, I had a couple come in. This one comes in from uh, Andy at theclaim.clinic. And he asks, uh, what percentage of your income is coming from active sources versus truly passive sources? Ooh. And uh, that, is, that is a good question because, I, you know, nothing is truly, truly passive. But it's probably been close to 50-50 uh, the past few months. What I would qualify, what I would qualify as passive income from, um, you know, affiliate revenue from book sales, from course sales, versus you know the active stuff where it's like mastermind hosting, coaching, um, you know, uh, freelancing, kind of the active proofreading and editing business that I've been doing. So there's it's a healthy mix, mm -hmm. and so what I try and spend my my time on as as it's available is working on some of the more speculative stuff to try and build those assets try and build those buy buttons where i can improve that ratio a little bit and that's i think that's a uh, an important point like if you have a well paying day job you can afford to invest that time right if you're if you're really struggling and you need to make rent next month, like that totally dictates your side hustle strategy. Like you you need to go Brian Harris on somebody's ass and like sell something directly, versus like okay I I have a good job I'm in no rush to get out of here. That's when I can start working on the courses, the ebooks, like building these more digital assets. Yeah, the niche sites, you know, the authority sites, all that sort of thing. Yeah, I talk about the same thing that you need to start a service rather than focusing on passive income because you have no clue. Uh, if any of the passive routes will even generate you any kind of income. Yeah. Uh, and that's the same. I mean, that's a mistake that I made many, many years ago was, you know, I built niche websites because I followed Pat Flynn mm -hmm. and uh, that just bombed. That didn't do anything for me. Just wasted tons of time and money. You know, one question that I wanted to ask, and we can edit this out if if you don't want to share. I'm cool with that. <laughs> I know a lot of people online are talking about their income reports, even for people who aren't making tons of money. And they're really, really hot. And we I don't want to talk about why they're hot, but it's something that I haven't noticed that you are doing. Is there is there a reason why that you're not sharing it? Are you maybe a little bit scared to say, you know, what's working, what's not? What's the story behind that? So like there's the, the the fake reason and the real reason. Like the fake reason <laughs> is like, oh, I don't want to be seen as another, you know, Pat Flynn imitator. But, you know, at, at the same time, like there, there are definitely worse people to imitate. Like he's done an awesome, awesome job. The the real reason is probably just I think I'm a little more private of a, of a person than that. And so never really talked about money in that way growing up. And, you know, all you'll notice I'll post kind of dollars and cents for specific projects, but not, mm -hmm. um, but not overall. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'll never do it, but just not something that I've, uh, gotten over my, <laughs> gotten over that, uh, maybe personal fear uh, of just yet. Nick, what's next for side hustle nation? Like what, 
what, where, where, are we, where are you taking us on this journey of side hustling? <laughs> I don't know. I'm hopefully just trying to uh, help some people out in, in building these non-job income streams. And, and I'm kind of on the same path in trying to figure out, you know, what's, what's next for me. Because if I can put up more experiments, more case studies and uncover, you know, guests with awesome stories about that stuff, like that's kind of what drives, um, drives the growth. So I don't know what that looks like in terms of, um, I don't know. And I'm not going to say like, I'll never do like the, the Jeff Walker style, like $2,000 product launch, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see that happening, uh, this year at least, but who knows, who knows? You know what I would like to see, and maybe this can be the call to action for this episode, but I would love to see those stories, like the action and the results that people have taken by listening to this show, you know, kind of like, um, a hustling uh, hall of fame. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay. Uh, of people who, I mean, just simple, simple stories about when we started listening to the show, the action we've taken and the results that we've had, because I mean, you know, Nick, it's, it's, it's hard for me to say, you know, you're the sole person who's brought me here, but you're a major reason I'm at where I'm at in my business. And, you know, I'm, I'm making three to $4,000 a month from the things that I've learned from you. And that's, that's worth saying that's worth spreading that your show inspires people not just to be inspired or to waste time listening to a podcast, but actually to <laughs> take action, right? Because you know how easy it is to just listen to podcasts and think, Oh, my goodness, there's so many things I can do. But to actually say, look, I'm making this Nick Loper is helping me pay off my debt, get on vacation to Bahamas, live in New Zealand where Lord of the Rings is. So, you know, whatever, whatever it is that dream is, that's, that's what I would love to see. But that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys want to leave, uh, leave a comment in the, in the notes to this episode of beside us on nation.com slash 100. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear, you know, what you've implemented over, over the course of the last, um, you know, two years or, or however long you've been, been listening. I think that's, one of the most motivating and rewarding things for me is to hear that people are actually taking action on this stuff. Please do. Uh, we would love to hear your story, Nick, as I think about, you know, hundred, hundred episodes. Okay. And I know the, the future is not set in stone, but looking back, like what's the one thing that you wish you could tell, uh, the Nick Loper, in that basement working on this website and Google said, you, you suck. We're not going to watch. <laughs> we're, we're not going to list your site anymore. What do you wish you could tell him the, the, the hustler of many years ago? Like the biggest, the biggest thing is like, despite all this stuff, it's not life threatening. Like we tend to way, you know, blow everything out of proportion. Like, Oh, this is horrible. Like I'm going to, but like life goes on, you know, and, and you're going to figure out a way, you're going to figure out a way past it. And it's, it's going to be stressful. It's going to be painful. It's going to be challenging. But you know, what, what would, what would life be if it was all rainbows and unicorns, you know, <laughs> this episode of the side of hustle nation, it is brought to you by broccoli. Eat your vegetables. <laughs> That's how you get sponsorships, buddy. <laughs> superfood, superfood. <laughs> Alex, thanks so much for hosting. You guys can check him out at alexbarker.co. On, uh, it was really cool of him to, to come on and you know just to, to do this to share, uh, provide a little bit of direction to my to my rambling stories. Uh, but on the show, we mentioned the Side Hustle Nation Facebook group, and would love for you to join Alex and I and and a really a growing crew of more than three hundred and something people, uh, three hundred something other side hustlers in there now. So if you hit up sidehustlenation.com slash fb, that should redirect you uh, over there to uh, to that group. Uh, you'll submit a request to join. I'll get you approved uh, as soon as I can. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in. All the notes and links from uh, from this week's episode are at sidehustlenation.com slash 100. And I'll be back in your earbuds with something a little less fluffy, I promise. Um, actually, some really good shows coming up, and I can say it because I've seen the future now, because, uh, because they're already recorded and they're really good. Um, until then, let's go out there, make something happen. Here's to the next 100. Hustle on. 
Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com.